So this is a smoker that has a cover here that opens up, slides back, and reveals the inside. And in order to turn on, it works the same way as the furnace. I'm using two ICs, the 555 timer, as well as the LM358N dual op amp. The 555 timer acts as a blinker circuit. I use the comparators in the dual op amp in order to get the other two lights to blink. Since the capacitor has a high and a low limit, then we can split these voltages and get these two different ranges for the lights to turn on. This configuration is called A-stable. The 555 timer consists of three 5000 ohm resistors that form two divided voltages. Inside are two comparators which use the divided voltages in order to flip the T flip flop in here which turns on or off the output. The resistor here determines the discharge rate of the capacitor and so it can speed up the lighting or slow the lighting down. The capacitor itself can also be switched out with the higher capacitance. And with a higher capacitance, you're able to have a longer delay since it takes longer for this capacitor to fully charge to two thirds and then discharge to one third. When the output is no longer supplying voltage, then it gets pulled down to ground. You can ground an LED to the output. And so now when the other LED turns off, the other one turns on and you get this simple alternating circuit. And so this circuit would work great for the blast furnace, but for the smoker, it has three lights that turn on. So I had to come up with a different circuit. I noticed that the capacitor fluctuates between these two divided voltages. And so in order to get three total states, I'm able to use a dual op amp in order to get the additional two states. Here's the simplest way I was able to get three alternating lights. And so for the reference voltage, I'm using the same divided voltage created by this potentiometer. On one comparator, it's connected to the negative, and on the other comparator, it's connected to the positive. And what that does is allows one side to be on while the other turns off. Again, it's sharing another signal from the capacitor, and that's just bridged across here. And so the divided voltage here is compared with the capacitor value, and depending on that, we'll turn on or off these circuits. An issue with the circuit is that this light tends to flicker. Another issue is that the next light in the sequence turns on before the other one turns off. In order to have only one light on at a time, I created this circuit. What's basically happening is when one LED turns on, I'm grabbing that power and putting it after the other LED. And so that blocks any current from running through that LED. And so this LED blocks the 555 circuit and the 555 circuit blocks this bottom LED. When blocking another LED, you want to use a resistor or a shot key diode. The output of the 555 and dual op amp get grounded, so you're basically shorting out the LED when doing this method. A simple way to block the LED is by connecting two resistors to the output of the 555 and connecting the other side to the respective ground of the other two LEDs. The 555 LED will be on the longest, but this is the simplest way to set up the circuit. In this circuit, I had to use two different reference voltages for the dual op amp, whereas this circuit uses the same reference voltage for both. So, here's the circuit. I managed to pack everything pretty tight. These two potentiometers I have set the same, so technically you can just use one of them and use the same divided voltage on both the op amps. In order to power everything, I am just using a 3 volt coin cell, and I have a boost converter which converts it to around 5 volts. This is because I didn't have too much space here, and so that 3 volt saves on a lot of space. In order to activate, I have copper foil tape, which connects this battery to the boost converter, turns on the whole circuit. For the front plate, it just pops out and slides through here. There's no guides for the door, and so it's pretty flimsy, but you just pull it all the way out and smush it closed. For the stop, I just cut a piece from the filament rule. Another thing that can be added is some contacts for this door. And so when the door closes, it activates the circuit. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. And thank you for watching.